Welcome back, everyone. I'm Tanya June Moore. This is the Sedona International Film Festival 27th year, and I'm coming to you live from the Sedona Performing Arts Center. And it is my pleasure. I love this job so much because I get people like Bob Mackey and the Bob Mackey in this <laughs> seat. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate you being at this festival. Well, my pleasure. And I like the Bob Mackey. The Bob Mackey. You, of course, well, need a capital T. People sometimes will say, are you, are you the Bob Mackey? And I go, oh, God, what do I say now? <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. There's only one of me, right? Well, I guess. I, ha I don't know any others. That's right. Although there was a man once that was pretending to be me for, for a couple of years in Chicago. Really? Yeah, and he was ordering, taking orders for wedding gowns and whatever, and he wasn't me at all. Was he actually designing them? And well, making it, I don't or was know. He just I'm money? not sure what he did or didn't do, but it was quite scary, really. That any kind of, if you didn't really know me, you'd say, oh, that's him. Really? Yeah. Is it, looking back, is it maybe just a little flattering? No, it's a little spooky. It, a little spooky. Is little. what it was, yeah. Yeah, that is a I didn't. Spooky. I didn't like the idea. It made me very nervous. I bet. Yeah. I bet. And I, I, I don't know if he, I don't, I don't know if he got arrested or what. I, I, it all kind of, it's very strange. Is there, leading right into that, is there an era that has been your favorite? You have created such <laughs> amazing designs for I've been years. doing this so long. Yes, so is there like you an know, era I, start, I started in, in 61 mm -hmm. and joined the union mm -hmm. and I was just out of school. And so I was, I was 21, 22. I was 22 at that point. And I got my first job on my first interview. And that was... And who was that with? Well, actually it was with a designer called Frank Thompson. And he was going to do a film in the south of France with Glenn Ford and Charles Boyer and, mm -hmm. and Hope Lang. And he says, I, I, I'll do the girls, but you draw the boys, because I, I really don't draw good men. So there I was right out of school, having drawn these glamour girls for you know four years or whatever. And all of a sudden I was drawing you know, Charles Boyer and Glenn Ford, who's, you know, people knew as movie stars, yes. not, not as uh, anything else really. And, but I did it, I got through it. But we had, we had a space at Paramount, uh, right in Edith Head's little suite. So every morning, Edith would come in and say, oh, what are you doing today? And it was perfect for me because all of us, usually at that point in time, you're in a back room somewhere, nobody knows who you are. Right. And there I was every day having conversations with Edith herself. I was wondering about that. And before I turned around, when, when that job was over, I was getting calls to come in and work with Edith mm. for this week, maybe. You know, I was like the extra guy. And I was good at, uh, there, there's, there's, they were making this movie and they had these sort of trick strippers. <laughs> and, and she says, I think you could do strippers. And I went, mm, I bet I could. <laughs> <laughs> it's my forte. <laughs> yeah, well, it, you know, I understood that. I was, I was the little boy on the bus going home with my mother as we passed the burlesque house in downtown Los Angeles. I said, what kind of movies do they show there? They weren't even movies at all. They were, you know, they, they were strippers. And when I was about 17 in high school, I said, I was, I worked downtown in a department store. And on the way home, I said, I'm gonna stop in there. And all they can say is no. Mm -hmm. And they didn't say no. And there I was with all these old men with their newspapers in their laps. And <laughs> in the, this kid watching, you know, Tempest Storm who just died recently, a couple weeks ago. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, boy, she was beautiful then. She had this bright red hair and white, white skin, kind of like you. Thank I, you. I don't, please don't strip. <laughs> I, I will do my best to keep my clothes on. <laughs> Thank you. No, but, but it, it was kind of wild. And then I, I, I was, actually I was in a junior college then and I got all my friends. I said, come on, let's go, let's go down to the burlesque house on Saturday. It's really fun. And, and we all went, girls and boys, and we, we had this whole group. And they were probably happy we were there, and they were doing a little extra business that night that way. Yes. But, uh, you know, I saw things I had never seen before. I bet you did. <laughs> I bet you did. But I also bet you learned a lot during that time. Well, How you learn when, when you work in, in show business, you better know about everything. You can't be all grand and, and pissy and try to be, you know, elegant. You got to know it all. 
And you can't. Be and you have ego. to un you have to understand also what they're selling and how they're selling it, mm -hmm. and that works in lots of areas. <laughs> what I've noticed about your designs is you design very specifically for the women that you're designing for, and all their bodies That's are different. That's the only way you could do it. And a lot of people don't think that, you know, or you have to design for the character they're playing, mm -hmm. or the, what, what, you know, just my, my time on the Carol Burnett show, the characters that she played. And she'd play a stripper, she'd play a hundred year old woman, she'd play, you know, she played all these different things, and we had the best time together. Is it true that you designed 65 costumes a week for that show? Oh, well, yeah, that was like an average, but that was it. Sometimes it was less, sometimes it was more. Uh, That's a lot. But I love working. I love working with her because she, she actually, and a lot of a lot of those ladies don't listen to you. They think they know everything. Mm. And Carol would. Say, I said I have an idea for that character. I would say, and like like I don't know if you remember, she played a character. Uh, which was a temporary secretary. I was getting ready to ask Mrs. you about her. Mrs. Wiggins. Mm -hmm. And Mrs. Wiggins originally, when Tim Conway wrote that, that whole sketch, was an elderly woman who came in to be a temp, and she couldn't do anything. And we had done so many old ladies, Carol had played, either ch young children or old ladies. We got over overloaded on those kind of characters. Mm -hmm. And I said, why don't we hire, why don't we make her like those girls that come in and are really temps that can't do anything. They could barely file their first name in the filing cabinet. And, you know, and she went, oh. And I said, I'd like you to look like this. And she went, oh, I get it, okay. And it was from then on, we never asked twice about it, you know. So I read a story about the skirt you put her in. Yeah. And you, you asked her to put her butt in the skirt. Well, she. She's, she was very slender in those days, mm -hmm. not as curvy as she became later, as everybody does a little more. Uh, we do. But I, she says, oh, she says, I don't have much of a butt. I said, just, just kind of stick your butt out in the back when you walk and keep your knees together. And we'll make the skirt really tight at the knees, so it gave her a certain walk. Yes. And um, she, she had so much fun, she would listen to me. And a lot of times, they, these these girls have so much ego they don't listen to you. You know, they, they know it better, and it doesn't always work that way. You can be a big help to them, and that's I think that's why I did well in that business. Yes, and you've been here for many many years now. I know. Well, I said so when you know when I was in 13, 12, 13, I had a show that I always watched on Saturday night, and that was uh, your show of shows, mm -hmm. which was. Uh, uh, Sid Caesar, Imogen Coca, Carl, Re the great Carl Reiner, who just yes. we just lost this year, who was always my favorite guest star on on Carol's show, because he would do anything and he would wear anything, and and you want him in drag, he'd be in drag. You want him dressed like a bull, he would be a bull. I mean, but we did it for him, and he would have the best time. He really enjoyed himself performing. Is, would he? Would you count him as one of your favorite people? Uh, one of my with? favorite guest stars yes. on things, because he was on a lot of shows. Mm -hmm. He did a show with Mitzi Gaynor where they did a whole tango number. I mean, he was amazing, you know. And he had no hair, but he had he had a, a, a he had two pays of every style, and he was amazing, just fabulous. So you were also influenced by Carmen Miranda. Well, yeah, that was when I was like four or five. Yeah, you noticed the colors. And I couldn't quite, you know, my mother didn't look like that for some reason. Mm -hmm. And she didn't dress like that either. And I had a teenage sister who, you know, they just thought, Come on, what is this woman? You know, and I just thought she was fabulous. Yes. And um, actually, I, 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 a couple of times, actually a couple, of, I was going to say one time, but a couple of times, I slipped on my mother's mules, her, her high heel bedroom slippers, and went out on the front porch. It was like a stage, and it had steps down to the walkway, out to the sidewalk. And I thought, this is like a stage. So I put those on, and I started being Carmen Miranda for about five, you know a minute or two, and I went tumbling down the stairs, cracked my whole chin open, and they had to take me to the emergency room and the whole thing. And you know what? About a week later, I did it again. <laughs> did you crack your chin open again? Again, yeah. And for years, I had these big, couple of big scars. They've kind of disappeared now, but they were there. 
they were there. But I just thought she was like like from space. Where, where, where do you see people that look like that? Absolutely. And believe me, my, my little mousy mother did not look like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you think fashion has changed from the time that you began in the 60s to today? Well, it, 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 there isn't like, oh, what's in this year? What right. skirt length are we wearing? Oh, this year we're wearing kimonos with fringe on it. <laughs> Nowadays, kimonos with fringe on, it's been going on for several years. Yes. And thank God, because it, it covers, it shows, it does, you know, it, it's really good. If something's good and looks good on you, you don't say, oh, that's not in style this year. Exactly. You just wear it, and you look good in it, and you believe in it. I feel like women are more free these days to just, it's okay, this looks well, they good can, on me. Especially this last year when everybody was kind of locked up and, and a, a lot of you know a lot of sweatpants and t-shirts and tanks and whatever and if you found something you really loved ten, chances are you'd find a place to wear it every week of your life somewhere and um, I think that's still going on it's kind of weird really but I remember when they'd say well what are the skirt lengths this year and, you, and there would be a particular oh well it's a half inch above the knee and then it got in the 60s it, it got well it's two inches above the knee and before you know it it was up to the crotches and secretaries doing their filing in offices would bend over and, and everybody would kind of look the other way because it was so terrifying you know how that was fashion it was perfectly all right to show your whole whatever right it was normal it was normal, but it was weird. I mean, you know, we would go, oh God, honey. Do you feel like you've created your magnum opus? Oh, I don't know, I don't know. Not yet? I, well, I, I think designing for a particular personality. I, I'm a costume designer. I've done a lot of fashion, but basically it's not my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. People that depend on, on the latest fashion usually are boring. I like, I like a woman who, who knows what she likes, knows what's good on her, mm -hmm. and, and goes for it. And that's why you've been with Cher so many years. Well, that girl, that girl is just, you know, she's the, the patron saint of Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's just amazing. She loved to get dressed. You know, the minute I said, oh, you could wear this and this, would you, would you wear that? Would I wear that? Oh, I love it. I love to get dressed up. That was her, you know. That, that and, was her model. And, and she still is. Yes, and congratulations on your nomination, by the way. Uh, which, which nomination? For her touring show that you're doing. Oh, her touring show. Well, yeah, I mean, you know. And sometimes those become TV specials, so that's when you can get Emmys and things. Yes. Yeah, and I have a bunch of Emmys. I was wondering, how many awards have you gotten? I couldn't find that anywhere. Well, you know? I, I, have, <laughs> I have nine Emmys for TV. For TV, I didn't. I only had three Oscar nominations, but I didn't get an Oscar yet. And, yes. la and last year on Broadway, I got a, a Tony Award for Best Costumes for a Musical on the Cher Show, mm -hmm. which which was about her life. It was she didn't play the part, even though she was perfect. But she didn't play the part. Somebody else, three other girls did it. Who do you consider your best friend? Oh, that's hard. I have a lot of best friends, or people that I really admire and like. Mm -hmm. And as, as performers go, anybody that will you know, take a moment and just listen to me, and, and if they have a question, I'll explain why I did this or why I did that. Or if you wear this, when you walk in, the whole audience will go crazy. And then they go, oh, really? Yes. And I'm usually right. Well, I think you've seen enough, so you know that you're right. <laughs> no, Is but it, 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 was, it was funny. On the Cher Broadway musical, a, a lot of our audience were, were women that would come on buses from New Jersey and from Boston and from, you, know, you name it, you know, Philadelphia, to, to see the show because they had been teenagers when Cher became this big, hot, new thing on television. Mm -hmm. And there was Cher at, God, what was she, 70 or something, looking like she was, you know, 22. Mm -hmm. I don't know how she did that, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, it, it was just amazing to see those women. They were like reliving their whole youth because all of a sudden, all of the, all of those girls that 
that say, oh, my nose is so big and, 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 and I have all this stringy long black hair. Because all the, all the, all the, the, the idealized beauties of the time had big, boofy, blonde hair, flips, beehives. It was all about looking like, like, like a Swedish hooker. <laughs> you know, they, you, you didn't see many girls that, that, that could be Middle Eastern or could be uh, a Native American or could be uh, Hispanic. Those were the, the ones that wished that they had, were blonde and some of them became blonde and that was always a mistake yeah. when, those, when those brown girls started having br blonde hair. Mm -hmm. That wasn't good. And all of a sudden she became this huge star and all these girls, people would tell them, they, oh, you look like Cher. And, and, and those women come up to me, she said, everybody tells me I look like Cher. And this woman was 60 years old or more, you know, and, and I'm going, oh, well, close. <laughs> <laughs> I've been next to her, so yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it, but that's the kind of, you know, that. How have you dealt with the divas of the world all these years? I mean, well, are there... there's a few that, that you do, you deal with for a, a couple of shots and then you say, oh, I can't live through this anymore. Mm -hmm. But there are very few of those. I, I could count them on one hand, the right. ones I walked out of fitting rooms. And usually they're the ones that brought their, you know, their mother and their boyfriend and their whatever, and they all had opinions. And after a while you say, why are you here? You've all got opinions, why not? You don't need me. Right, you don't need the expert. And that happens very seldom, though. That, that almost never happens. Is there anybody today that you really enjoy working with or you would like to work with? Well, you see them sometimes. I never, I never really craved to, to work with somebody as much as I liked the way they looked. And if it came up and all of a sudden they wanted to hire me, I'd be very happy to work with them. But I, I didn't go after them like some crazy rapid fan. Right. You know. Well, you didn't need to. You're well, it was it was funny. I mean, y you know, people would come to me and want. She said, "Can you do a dress like this that you did for Cher?" I said, "No, that was for her." But what could we do for you that would make it look like you? Mm. And and that then they would start thinking, and they didn't know. They didn't know who they were mm. usually. Do you feel like you've helped people figure that out for themselves? I, I, some people, yeah. Anybody in particular? Well, Cher for for one, but. She loved it so much, and still does. Mm -hmm. Makes it easy. I mean, this, this woman was on the cover of People Magazine, at, at, you know, on her 75th birthday. And I think, I met her when she was 22. How old am I? <laughs> you know, you just can't, you just say, well, she's doing it, and she's making money, and everybody just is so interested. And so they still love good, her. Good for her. Well, I would say that you are legend at this point. God. Do you do you feel in like, his own mind? No, I don't think it's in your own <laughs> mind. I, I mean, I feel like you have absolutely stepped into that. That zone. I didn't mean to do that. Good. But I, I just I love, I love being part of the the process, of, of creating a character in a play or or a comedy sketch or a whatever it may be, and you can't just put a pretty dress on somebody right. and make that happen. They've got to be with you. They've got to be ready for it. Yes. And and the voice has to change. And 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 they say, oh, but I could change my mouth a little bit for that because so and so looks like that. And and oh, my friend, you know, my friend Zelda is uh, she. I, I'm gonna think of her when I could myself get my makeup on and everything. Yes. And I would always draw, I would always do a sketch of how I wanted their hair to be, and the wigs would be specially made for that. You don't just leave it up to a hairdresser. <laughs> because why would we ever do that? Well, but you do, people do. You know, they say, oh, well, she knows how, how to do it. But very often they don't, they don't know how to make it happen. The worst is when you're doing like a turn of the century period film or, or whatever, and, and everybody is wearing a hat of the time. And the hairdressers are in there going, well, if I put the hat down here, you're not going to see my hairdo. So they start slapping them on the back. Well, then, then the mean old designer Bob comes in and, and changes everybody's hat. If I don't change the hat itself, I, I said, no, this has to go forward. This has to tilt only, let's see, only to the right. Women didn't tilt their heads back That's and right. forth. The hats were designed to go a certain way. Mm -hmm. And 
it's amazing. And they go, oh, yeah, that looks better. So, you, you know, you just work with people. Well, I want to see if anybody out here has a question. Usually we have a question. Yes. Um, I know you worked with Marlena Dietrich. I, I, I knew her, but I didn't really work with her. Okay. I knew her. She, We're yeah. Talking about Marlena Dietrich. The, the lady that ran my workroom for several years had done all of Marlena's nightclub, amazing clothes. And, and Jean-Louis had designed them. And I worked for Jean-Louis for, on, a, on the last Marilyn Monroe film which never got finished. It was canceled out. And then a month later, she was gone. She died after she sang, you know, happy birthday to the president. With your dress on. Well, it wasn't. You drew it. I drew it for Jean-Louis. He said, will we do this, this, and this? I didn't know what it was for even. And I just drew it up one day. And then a couple weeks later, all of a sudden, I opened the paper, and there she was singing to the president in her one layer of sheer, sheer, sheer with diamonds all over it. And can you imagine that in, in Madison Square Garden, what wow. that would be like? And it was, it was amazing. And now somebody just bought the dress a couple of years ago. How much was that, Joe? Four million dollars for this tired old dress. But... <laughs> This tired old dress. But I mean, on Marilyn Monroe, she never, they would never allow her to wear clothes like that in movies. You see, they were very careful because she, as a young girl, she had no problem posing nude on a, on a red velvet carpet or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, that was just, that was fine. And she, she had a beautiful body and was proud of it. And, and people were, some people were shocked and thought that harlot and, and, and nobody looked like that on camera. Nobody looked like Marilyn. That's why and she still, still don't. Today. Yes, today she is still There's a hot All body. those girls that try to be her, it's just, it's hopeless. Mm. Well, is there another question out here, Trace? Do you have a favorite design that you've done or one in your mind that you haven't been able to create yet that you're dying to come out? That's a, that's a hard question because very often what you like this week, you, you don't want to do it next week because you've already done it or whatever. Um, and, and also certain people can wear things and you go, oh my God, I can get my hands on her. That would be fantastic. And no, maybe nobody else could do, could do that, you know. That could happen uh, and has. And it's like, it, it, it's like my friend uh, Angie Dickinson. You know who that is? Oh, yes. Yeah. Angie Dickinson wanted a dress to wear to the Academy Awards. She was going with, I guess he was her ex husband then. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Sorry. Uh, Angie Dickinson's ex husband. Bert Backrack. Bert Backrack, who had been the conductor on, on the, the Marlena Dietrich tours back in the 50s in Vegas and all. And, and she was married to them, or were his boy, his girlfriend, I guess, at the time. And she wanted to dress like Marlena's, and her figure was lovely, and, and she was blonde, and she could do it. And I said, okay, for you, I would do that. And I did a, like a Dietrich sort of knockoff for Angie to wear to the Academy Awards. And she looked fantastic. Uh, but I wouldn't do that for anybody else. But she was a friend of Marlena's, and Marlena would approve completely, believe me. Interesting how that works. I hope you write a book with all these stories. Oh, I got a book coming out soon. I knew you would. I have one in November coming out that's... Uh, it, it, it should be interesting. A lot of photographs, a lot of sketches. Mm -hmm. Actually, here we have sketches on exhibit and some photos uh, for tonight. So take, take a good look. I will, I promise. And feel free to take pictures if you need to. You know. Of course. You are such a pleasure. You have totally exceeded all expectations. I'm a big show off. I love it. <laughs> but you're humble. And that's a, a very no, delicate balance. No, but I'm just talking about it's a job. It's a job that you enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. You know, and there are people that get these jobs like mine and they don't like it because they don't know quite it's not in them, in their heart to, to do that. Mm -hmm. And I they're friends of mine and I go, You don't need to do that. Just go into fashion, design a new a new whatever every year, you'll be fine. Don't, don't, you know, you don't have to be, do what I do, it's, it's something else. And create your own way. Well, it's, it's fun to create a character in a, in a play or in a sketch where you read it and you go, oh, I know what to put on her. 
or I know what she would do. I would love to do a show with, about you. Oh, well. <laughs> I say yes. And I know just what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I am flattered. Thank you very much. No, I, I, love, I, I love it when, when people have, they just know how they want to look mm -hmm. and go for it. I had to grow into this. <laughs> it's okay. But I love it. I wouldn't trade anything now, but thank you. That's a huge I know I really, I, I would have the best time. You know, and whenever you, whenever it's based on somebody we all know, it's so easy because you look at the real one. Mm -hmm. And you would be the real one we'd be looking at. <laughs> well, I say yes, please, let's collaborate. Okay. You're wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for being here with me and taking this time. I'm so My pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. And ladies and gentlemen, I mean, how does it get any better than this? <laughs> Thank you, the Bob Mackey, being here with us at the Sedona International Film Festival 27. Please catch him tonight at the Sedona Performing Arts Center, where he's going to receive the award, the Lifetime Achievement Award. And we're going to we're going to tell, we're, we're going to ask questions, and people can can ask questions, and I'll I'll try to be as honest as possible. You heard it right here. <laughs> he's going to be very honest tonight. I can't wait yeah. to hear it. I will be here. I hope you all show up, and we will see you very soon with another filmmaker.